Hey everyone, and welcome back to part two of how to turn your DVR into extra storage for your PC. So we did get this guy out of the DVR, and he is totally disconnected from everything, and we've pulled our hard drive out of our own DVR, I'm assuming, and you're at the step now where you're trying to figure out how to add it to your computer and actually wipe the storage clean and actually be able to use it as extra storage. Well, before I get to them, before I cut to the computer to show you how to reformat the hard drive, I thought I would give a quick demonstration on how to actually wire it up into your system for those of you who aren't uh, as tech savvy. So before we get into things, I'm just going to go over one more time about the connections that you're going to use on your computer. If you've seen the first part of the video uh, demonstrating on how to take the, uh, the drive out of its actual DVR. I, uh, I told you that there are PETA connectors and SATA connectors and uh, this drive here is indeed a SATA connection and most computers nowadays will be using this type of connector. If you have a PETA connection um, you're going to have to get that adapter that I told you about if this is what your computer uses. Uh, but if, it's, if your computer is still PETA and your hard drive is PETA then you're good to go. Uh, most computers nowadays, though, will be using this type of connection, the SATA connection. Uh, it will look like it will look like this on your computer. Uh, there'll be two separate wires. Uh, they'll both have these little L-shaped brackets to them, so that's the best way to identify them. Uh, this is the cable from the DVR that I'm using as well, just to uh, just for demonstration purposes. Um, but this is going to be for your data connection, and then the power cable is going to look like this. It's going to have that same uh, L bracket just on the other side. It will be a lot wider as well. Uh, but this is for your power and this is for your data. And those are both going to plug into the wider plug and the thinner plug, obviously. Uh, when you go to put them in though, um, you're going to be tempted to hear a clicking noise when you're plugging it in. Um, do not worry, it doesn't click in. It actually just slides all the way in. You're not going to feel any uh, tactile feedback when you're trying to plug in these connectors. So don't force it. Uh, just slide the connectors on until they hit the back wall of the of their connection and then once they're on they're good to go. And then obviously you can probably add the hard drive into something like a, like a hard drive bay like what I have here. I have my main hard drive right here. If I wanted to add another one I could just slide it in the bottom and screw it on. And for demonstration purposes do this one-handed. You take your hard drive and just slide it into the caddy and then make sure you properly add made make sure you add screws to it and properly mount it so it doesn't wobble or shake. Vibrations are not the best thing for these hard drives, so try try to treat these with care. Try not to uh, mess with them all too much, but just slide it on in like that, add the screws, and then plug in the power and the data connectors on the end of it, and then you should be good to go. Once that's all hooked up, make sure that your power is running back into a power supply so it actually does turn on and spin. And also make sure that you plug your data connection into your motherboard as well, into any one of these, uh, these slots down here on the side. Most motherboards will have them here, but um, most SATA connectors will be like in groups. They'll be in a little pack like this. They're mostly located on the lower, the lower portion of the motherboard. But make sure you have all your wires hooked up basically and plug it all in and then when you go to actually turn on your computer it should just be as simple as going into the software and reformatting it from there. And um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my, um, switch over to this computer, have it all wired up and I will see you guys there. Alright, well assuming you haven't broken anything and you made sure everything is plugged back in, you should be on your uh, desktop now and now we're going to go through the process of actually reformatting the hard drive and using it as extra storage. As you can see my desktop's uh, a little bit messy. I have been modifying my computer so everything might look a little bit different from what your layout might look like um, but if you have any addition of Windows uh, from Windows 7 and up I can almost guarantee this is going to be the exact same process. If you have XP or earlier it might be a little bit different but you should be able to use this as a use this as a general rule of thumb or our guidelines to kind of figure this out. So we're going to go ahead and start by going to our start menu. Um, as you can see, I've redesigned my start menu from Windows 10. But you're going to want to look for uh, the disk management uh, program. So you want to go to your search bar and you want to type disk 
management or you can actually just type disk and you should be able to see the program up here at the very very top it is labeled as disk mgmt.msc that's the shortened version of it but you want to go ahead and click that and it should open up the built-in disk management utility that is in windows now assuming you've done everything correctly you should see the hard drive pop up as an extra an extra bit of storage that actually shows up and registers in here. So this disk one right here should be the extra hard drive. Um, the hard drive that we were looking at, at least mine, was 320 gigs. So if we look at this in general, there's 282 gigs on this partition, 15 gigs on this partition, and then healthy primary partition is about 518 megabytes. Adding all these together, that is roughly about 320 gigs. So this will be the hard drive that we're going to reformat. You want to make sure you select the proper uh, drive. If you go onto a different hard drive, say this one up here, this is my main hard drive. This is where everything on my computer is stored, the operating system, my files, and everything. And this one down here is an external drive that I have plugged in via USB. You want to make sure that you look at everything that's on that hard drive and add up the numbers and see which one adds up to be the hard drive that you're looking for. So if you're sure that you have everything plugged in and everything is working but you're still not seeing your hard drive uh, pop up on this list, it could be that the hard drive is actually not spinning when you plug it into the computer itself. Some DVR hard drives are actually encrypted to the point where they won't even turn on unless they are plugged into that specific DVR and they are only plugged into that DVR. And there is a trick to get around this in order to get it to power up so you can actually wire it into your computer. I'm going to put a link in the description to Cactus Smoke who made a YouTube video actually demonstrating on how you can get around this trick and uh, get the hard drive to power on and then get the computer to register it. And you can go ahead and watch that step and come back whenever you uh, get your hard drive working. So as you can tell by going through that file explorer menu, you can see that I'm not getting my hard drive uh, populated up here. So it is encrypted and I'm not going to go through the process of actually de-encrypting it and pulling the information off of there, considering that there's not really anything I really want off of my hard drive. But if you do want to pull the information off of your hard drive, there are free programs available online that will allow it to be extracted from your hard drive, especially if it's an older hard drive as well. Um, older systems are easier to get into and actually pull information out, but since my stuff is encrypted and I'm not wanting to break the law, I'm going to go ahead and just wipe my hard drive clean and show you how to use it as storage, since that is the main purpose of the video. So we're going to go ahead and wipe this hard drive down here. There's three separate partitions, all of which are the primary partitions, so we can just go ahead and right click and hit delete volume. It will say uh, is not recognized by Windows and the day recognized is recognized by another system. Uh, do you want to delete this partition? Yes, because we do not want any of the information on any of these partitions. We can go ahead and just delete each one at a time. And then you can see that it has changed to be unallocated, which means it's just empty space. I'm going to go ahead and do this to each of the partitions that we have. And bigger, the bigger the size of the partition, the longer it may take for it to wipe, but you can see it's just taking a couple seconds to actually get that information off. And it just finished, so now that everything is done, we can go ahead and look at the whole uh, partition size as well. Uh, when you go to look at the size, it says 298 gigabytes. It's obviously not 320, but there is going to be some set amount of space that is not available to you. That's just how hard drives are. You're not going to get the full number, but this is as much space as we can get. So we're going to go ahead and reformat this guy. So we want to hit new simple volume, and we're going to walk through the little setup wizard here. It's going to ask how much storage do we wish to allocate to this new partition that we are making, or this new volume size, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use everything. So we're going to leave that as full and go to the next step. Uh, and then you can give it a letter, so we can go ahead and give it any letter in the alphabet that is not being used by your hard drive. So if we go through here, we can see local disk C is my main hard drive. Uh, my external hard drive, I gave the letter G when I reformat that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stick with D, and we're going to format it as D. Um, you can mount it to a folder or not give it a path as well, but I would recommend giving it a path so the computer recognizes it and this will be recognized on other systems as well. You can go ahead and click next, and then it's gonna ask for what kind of file system we want. If you have any hard drive that is in the hundreds of gigs, which I'm assuming you do if you're using the DVR hard drive since they're designed like that, 
I would stick with NTFS since it's going to be able to handle a much larger system. Uh, XFAT is for the new type of, uh, it's a new type of FAT file format which is used to primarily be put on flash drives and smaller media that you can take around with you. So we want to use NTFS for this big hard drive that we have. Uh, the allocation unit size, uh, this is actually for each chunk of file that is going to be rendered onto the hard drive itself. It's recommended just to leave this as default since NTFS is more than capable of reformatting itself and choosing the right allocation size. And then uh, down here at the bottom, we're going to do uh, volume label. You can name this anything you want. So I'm going to go ahead and put extra storage and just name it as that. And if you want to make sure that everything is totally wiped off your hard drive and that this guy is completely clean, no extra data lying around or anything like that, you want to uncheck Quick Perform, and that's going to give it as a full file format. This will take significantly longer if you have it unchecked, but if you're looking just to wipe it really quick and make sure that all the data is just erased but not permanently gone, you can leave this uh, checked so it will get the process done a lot quicker. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it off so I can wipe this guy entirely clean and get this entire hard drive wiped out. And then uh, we can do down here, enable file and folder compression. Uh, this option is there for if you want to use any folders or any files that you drag onto the hard drive. They will, I believe, automatically be uh, compressed in order to save on storage. But obviously I have enough space on there and this is just extra storage so I'm not going to worry about that either. Um, but if everything looks all right to you, you can go ahead and click next. Uh, it's going to run through everything and you want to check to make sure everything you selected is correct. And I have, again, quick format as checked off as no, so this will take some time. But I go ahead and click finish and then you can see down here that it is formatting the hard drive and up here you'll start to see some of the statistics beginning to change so it's walking through the process. Uh, it may, as you see up here at the top, it might say not responding to some other things, but don't worry about it. Just let it be, let it do its, do its thing and actually format the hard drive. And then by the time it is all said and done, you should have a blank empty drive. And I'll come back to you guys in a minute when it's all said and done. All right, so it just finished doing the reformatting. And now you can see that it says extra storage with your drive letter or whatever you named it and whatever drive letter you have. And everything seems to be good. We're pretty much done at this point. I'm going to go ahead and give it a test. And we're going to go ahead and drag some files onto it. So I'm going to go to my file explorer. And you can see it pop up right here. 297 gigs free of 298. So it's the full drive. There's nothing on it. We're going to go ahead and... Oh, what can I take? I'll take some of these vaporwave pictures that I have. Drag and drop them on. And it works just fine. So now you have an extra hard drive attached to your computer and you have extra storage. Um, if you want to make sure that the drive is working properly and you want to keep stuff up, up to date, and this can be applied for all your hard drives, I recommend a program called Crystal Disk Info. I can go ahead and show you it on my computer as well. Uh, Crystal Disk Info is right up here. Uh, the guy who made this is in Japan, so everything is in Japanese when you go to download it, but I'll leave a link in the description that actually takes it to the website where there's an English version of it that will show you everything on your hard drive. But you can see up here I have three hard drives in my computer. Uh, I can go ahead and click on this one right here and this is the extra storage drive. You can see it pop up there on that little pop-up bubble. And this will tell you what the health status of your drive is, what the temperature is, if there are any read or write chunk errors. It'll make sure all everything in the drive will be pretty much checked on startup. Um, most drives have a little chip in them called Smart, which enables the drive to actually be checked by the computer itself. This program just taps into that little chip so it can display all the information to you in real time. So again, I would really recommend Crystal Disk Mark Info since this will tell you in real time what's good and what's bad about your hard drive. And if you start to feel like if there's any problems or it's running slow, you can just pop this guy open, give it a quick look at, and you can see if anything is bad with the drive. Plus, if you get the Shizuku edition like I do up here, you can change the background to <laughs> different anime girls, which is kind of interesting. But um, there is just a plain, simple uh, one that's even portable that you can put on a thumb drive and take it with you and use it on other systems if you want to go that route as well. But anyways, that's going to do it for today, guys. Uh, enjoy your extra storage that you have on your computer now. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment box below. And I'll see you in the next one.